With this video, I just wanted to discuss the optimal, optimal growth model. Um, most growth models aren't going to follow this, and I'll explain why uh, in a minute. So here I just made up a, a bunch of numbers. So um, in the X column, I have 0 through 9. In the Y column, I have 2 through um, 16. And I've got it kind of designed to be an exponential growth type model. So we would expect that if we were going to, you know, attach a graph to this, that would have a nonlinear attribute to it, and it would be more like uh, compound interest, the way it grows um, going upwards. So I expect this model to be, you know, the future value of the population, uh, to be the beginning population times e um, raised to some rt. And the goal here is to find what P and R are so that we can come up with this nice little um, formula to figure out if we can approximate some of these other values, maybe beyond um, 9 here to extrapolate some information. Now some of the information is uh, given, like for instance, P has to be the y-intercept. So we're looking at 0, 2 here. Um, graphically, that would be this point here. So I know for sure that this is going to start off with a population of 2. The e is just a constant. It's a, a number built into your calculator, 2.7128. And the r is the tricky part. t, of course, we're going to let be this 1, the 2. Now, whether it's you know ah, years, hours, days, whatever it is, um, we'll just let that be our time frame. So the r is the hard part. And there is a formula for r. Um, it's ln of 2 over um, d. Now d is the time it takes to double. Um, the 2 here represents literally the time it takes to double. Um, so if this was 3, then down here would be the time it takes to triple and so forth and so on. But this is the general formula that the book covers and I like using because doubling is usually easier to find. So one way of doing that is if you have the data available to you, um, pick a number and see how long it takes to double, or even a close approximate. It's not going to be perfect all the time. I set this one up so it's perfect. So here's 2, and here's 4, and it took it 3 time frames to double. In other words, eh, 3 years if you say it. Um, so I'm going to plug that into my formula over here. So that'll be ln of 2. It took 3 years to double, so I'm going to put a 3 in the bottom. I'm going to type that into the calculator. Uh, ln is usually on the left-hand side of your calculator. Two, don't forget to close the parentheses and divide by three. So this is saying that the growth rate per time frame, in this case I'll say years, is 0 0.23105. I like going about five decimal places on this just to get a very good um, approximation. Now this represents literally 23% per uh, if I make this years, then it would be 23.1% um, per year as a growth rate in an exponential model. So this would be 0 0.23105 times t. Now if I wanted to find out an extrapolated value, let's say 15 years, then all I would have to do is plug in uh, 15 into time. So then this would become f is equal to 2e.23105. And then t in this case would be, I want to know what the population is after 15 years. So let's see here, 2 second ln will give you the e raised to the, and then 0 0.23105 times 15 for a grand total of 64. So in the future value sense, I would expect this to be 64, whatever it is, 64 million, 64 bananas, whatever. Um, so that's one way of coming up with this really important number, the doubling factor rate. All right, so let's look at a realistic example. Here we have the population of the United States since 1900. So here we, year zero is 1900 year 110 is 2010. So you can see here the population obviously is going up over this time period and each one of these points is literally the plot of 076, 1092, 
and so forth and so on. And I have two models associated with these points. Um, the blue line here is a linear approximation model. The red line is the exponential approximation model. Now out of the two, since I'm dealing with a population, I would lean towards the red one because populations generally grow exponentially. But as I was looking up this information, the growth rate from year to year changes a lot, uh, especially in important years like um, World War I, which would happen right around here, World War II, which would happen right around here, and what happens to the populations in wars is they drastically go down. World War I was horrible. Um, the growth rate actually became negative. So um, the linear model seems to fit better in this case, but I'm still going to go for the exponential. So I'm going to go through my list and look for a possible doubling effect. So I like starting off with the smallest number, 76.1. So you know, put that in my calculator and double it, times it by 2. So I'm looking for about 152.2. And amazingly, that's really close, 152.3. I lost my charge of the tablet. Hmm, I don't know what happened. Connection lost. All right. So this is the doubling factor. It has doubled in population from here to here. And the number of years it took to do that was 50 years. So the um, growth rate percent per year that I'm going to use will be ln of 2 divided by uh, in this case, 50. All right, so let's see here. ln of 2 divided by 50, 0 0.01386. So this becomes 0 0.01386, five decimal places. So about 1.4% per year growth in the United States from 1900 to 1950. Um, what's funny is if you do the same thing for the later portion of this, the growth rate actually goes down. Um, the population has been not growing as quickly as the population gets bigger. And that kind of makes sense, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So our formula for the population in the United States, starting off with 76.1 million people, would be E raised to the point zero one. 386t. And we can try to use this to see what the population would be well in 2015. Now each one of these numbers was July. Um, the most recent number that I could find for June using the population clock, let's see here, population clock. So right now the United States population is 320.7 million. So let's see here. Where are we now? I'll just write this down so I don't forget. 0.1 million. So I would expect if I use T to be 2015, which would be 115 years, so I'd be looking for what number would be associated with 115 years after 1990. So let's plug that in and see what happens. So this would becomes f equals 76.1 e to the 0 0.01386 and t in this case is going to become 115. All right, type that into the calculator. So 76.1, the beginning population in 1990, um, the e function. 0 0.01386 times 115. So by this model, the population should be somewhere close to 374.6 million. Now notice this number is a lot bigger than the actual number. So this model is kind of incorrect in a way, and the main reason is that the growth rate for the population up to 1950 is a lot different than the growth rate of the population after 1950. Um, before 1950 it was close to 1%, after 1950 it's closer to 0.5%. Um, so the growth rate has gone down drastically in the last 50 years or so.
But that's what models do. They give you numbers you can play with in the future, but sometimes they're not exactly accurate. You have to take them with a grain of salt. But that's how you find rate with the doubling factor. Of course, the best way to get the equation for any uh, association with these points is to use a computer program. Um, so here, I showed you earlier, was the line that went through it. And the equation for the line, the computer calculates out for me, is uh, the slope of point two, uh, 2 2.11 and a y-intercept of 61.84 million. Now that's a little low compared to the true value of the beginning population. And again, we're a little low at the end here um, where the population is supposed to be up here. Um, the line is down here. So it's you know, a decent approximation. So then we went through and calculated out um, oh, this line ourselves using the doubling factor. And this one actually works pretty well until it gets to about um, 1980. So somewhere between 1960 uh, and 19, I'm sorry, 1970 and 1980, the model starts falling apart and the points start falling below our model which is okay, it's still pretty accurate up to about 1980. The computer generated one for us, or for me in this case, it changes the y-intercept a little bit, so it makes it start off a little bit high, but it does force the curve to stay close to all of the points throughout the motion. Uh, and it gives you the function over here, 81.36 e to the 0 0.01. I can't get it to go beyond the 0 0.01. Um, and therefore it actually gives you a better fit. So the computers are already um, pretty much programmed in here to give you the equation of graphs and whatnot and then you can just interpret it um, as the rate and the beginning population and it becomes actually a better model that way. That's all I had to say about computer-generated graphs.